This video will be about the head impulse test, also known as the head thrust test, and we'll focus on how to perform the test, how to interpret the result, and some essential knowledge that you should know about. We'll start with how to perform the test itself. The first thing you have to do is to sit down with the patient straight in front of you. Your faces should be about one meter apart. This is mainly because you're going to grab the patient's face, so you need to be relatively close, but not too close, of course. Next, instruct the patient to keep his vision at your nose. The examiner's vision should be focused at the patient's eyes at the same time. Then you're going to explain how you will perform the exam. This is important as the test may seem a bit extreme and scary to some of the patients if they're not mentally prepared for it. Say something like, look at the nose, keep looking at it. I will take a hold of your head and I'm going to move it a bit around. And you're just going to try to keep looking at my nose. Now you're going to take a hold of the patient's head in a similar manner as shown on the picture. It's a very good idea to just slightly move the head towards each side a few times. This is in order to make the neck relax so you don't strain any muscle. Well, move the head slightly around without any warning and suddenly you will twist the head of the patient suddenly towards one side. Now there are one out of two things that you will observe, either a normal or an abnormal result. In a normal result, the eyes of the patients will never let go of your nose as you turn the head. This means that the test is negative for that side. In an abnormal result, however, just as you move the head, the eyes will stay fixed and move with the head. They will let go of your nose just as you move the head. The test is then positive for this side. In an abnormal result, very shortly after you twist the head and the patient does not keep their eyes fixed at your nose, they will move the eyes back towards your nose. This is still abnormal, as what we test for is whether the patient can keep their vision fixed at your nose at all times, or if they cannot. After you finish the observation for the first switch, you turn the head back towards the center, and then twist the head towards the other side. Repeat the twists a few times for both sides to make sure that the result is correct, and in case the patient didn't just misunderstand something the first time. Lastly, we will repeat some essential knowledge and mention some other essential things. The examination is done to test the vestibular ocular reflex. The vestibular ocular reflex is basically a reflex that stabilizes the gaze when you move your head around. Head impulse is a part of the HINTS exam. The HINTS exam is an examination where you perform head impulse, nystagmus, and screw deviation tests. All of these are useful in patients presenting with dizziness. This test specifically is most useful for neuritis vestibularis, which is also known as vestibular neuritis. However, it will also give abnormal results in other cases that also causes paresis of the vestibular nerve. If you move the patient's head towards the right and they have an abnormal result, this means that the problem is with the right vestibular nerve. Right is right. This also applies for the left side, so if you move the head towards the left, get an abnormal result, then the problem is with the left vestibular nerve. The test is not extremely sensitive, with a sensitivity of about 70%. Note that many sources state very different numbers for the sensitivity. The specificity, on the other hand, is relatively high, at about 90%. This, together with how quick and easy the test is to perform, makes it a really valuable tool. The more quickly you turn the head of the patient, and by repeating the test a few times, will improve the sensitivity of the test. Thank you for watching. I hope it has been educational. If you have any questions, feel free to post them below. Cheers!